The financial stability of a company can be tested in many ways. One of the quickest ways to see just how well a company is performing is to use financial ratios. In this lesson, you will learn what asset management ratios are, how to calculate them, and how to interpret them. There are five major categories of ratio analysis, namely liquidity, debt management, asset management, profitability, and market value ratios. Asset management ratio measures the efficiency with which the firm uses its assets to produce sales. Some common ratios are inventory turnover, age of inventory, receivables turnover, age of receivables, and asset turnover. First, the inventory turnover. If your company sells physical goods, this is the most important asset management or turnover ratio. It represents the number of times inventory is sold and replaced. It also shows how well are the companies managing their inventory. And one way to calculate this is to simply take cost of goods sold and divide that by the average or the ending inventory, whichever is available. Take note that some authors use sales in lieu of cost of goods sold in the formula shown. For example, Company A, company A has cost of goods sold of $250,000, a beginning inventory of $35,000, and an ending inventory of $15,000. To compute for the inventory turnover, you just have to divide $250,000 over the average of the beginning and ending inventory. Thus, $250,000 over $25,000, we will get the answer of 10 and we have to express this in times. The result now is the number of times the inventory is sold and restocked. Therefore, company A bought and sold their inventories 10 times. If the figure is too high, the company should look out for stock outs. And if the figure is too low, the company may have an, invent an obsolete inventory. Therefore, a high ratio indicates that the company is able to manage their inventories efficiently. Next up is the age of inventory. With the inventory turnover ratio, the business owner should also look at the day sales in inventory, which highlights how many days on average it takes to sell the inventory. Age of inventory represents the number of days inventory sits in the warehouse, or this measures the number of days from purchase of the inventory to the sales of the same. For example, company A has inventory turnover of 10 times. To get the age of inventory, we just need to divide 365 days, or sometimes companies use 360 days over the inventory turnover. That is 365 over 10. Our age of inventory is now 36.5 days. This means that it takes the company 36.5 days before they can restock their current inventories. Keep in mind that the lower the ratio means that the quicker the inventory is selling, which is good for the company. Next up, we will have receivables turnover. This measures the efficiency of extending credit and collecting the same. It indicates the average number of times in a year a company collects its open accounts. The receivables turnover ratio is most often calculated on an annual basis, though this can be broken down to find quarterly or monthly accounts receivable turnover as well. The formula for computing this is net sales over the average account re accounts receivables. For example, company A has net sales of $800,000, beginning receivable of $64,000, and ending receivables of $72,000. You just need to divide $800,000 over the average of the beginning and ending receivables. Therefore, we will have $800,000 over $68,000. Our receivables turnover is 11.76 times. This means that the company's receivable is being collected 11.76 times. 
as before, the higher the accounts receivable turnover ratio, the better the company is doing collecting its accounts receivable. A high ratio implies efficient credit and collection process. One caveat, if the ratio is too high, it may mean that there are too large a discount for early payment or that the terms are too restrictive. Next is the age of receivables. Along with this, a business owner should also look at the day's receivable ratio as it indicates how long on average is the business taking to collect on its credit sales to customer. Age of, rece age of receivables is also known as day sales outstanding or DSO or average collection period ACP. The day's receivables ratio is calculated by dividing the number of days in a year, 365, by the receivables turnover ratio. For example, Company A has an inventory turnover of 11.76 times. To compute for the age of receivables, we just need to divide 365 or 360 days over the receivables turnover, that is 365 over 11.76. We will now have an age of receivables of 31 days. This means that it takes 31 days for the company to collect receivables. And therefore, the shorter the DSO or age of receivables, the better it is for the company. Lastly, we have asset turnover. Asset turnover measures overall efficiency of a company in generating sales using its assets. The formula is similar to ROA except that net sales is used instead of net income, that is net sales over total assets. For example, company A has sales of $900 and a total assets of $450. To compute, we divide 900 by 450. Therefore, we have a total asset turnover of 2 times. This means that for every $1 worth of asset, the company was able to generate sales worth $2. High asset turnover ratios are a positive indicator that the company is utilizing its assets efficiently to produce sales. The higher the asset turnover ratios, the more sales the company is generating from its asset. Low asset turnover ratios, on the other hand, are a negative indicator. This means that the company is not utilizing its assets sufficiently to produce sales. It could be that their assets may be obsolete or they are running the company below full capacity. Once again, asset management ratios measures the efficiency with which the firm uses its assets to produce sales. These ratios are inventory turnover, age of inventory, receivables turnover, age of receivables, and asset turnover.